John! What? Red 7! I don't know what Red 7 means. Hot route! I don't. W what is hot route? Will you just go stand on the other side, please? Down! Come on! Ready! Down! Set! Hut! 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 Hit me! Booyah! That's what we call a sack lunch! Nom, 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 nom! <laughs> It's time for the Soonerscoop.com postgame show presented by Eskridge Lexus in Oklahoma City. Eskridge Lexus is the official travel partner of Soonerscoop.com podcasts. Now, here's your road crew, Carrie, Eddie, and Bob, wrapping up all the action and reaction from this week's game. All right, everybody, welcome back in. Wow. That is the sound of Arkansas State uh, taking the field today, that uh, little glitch you heard there. Uh, welcome back. It is time for the Eskridge Lexus postgame podcast. The Sooners start out uh, year two under Brent Venables with a 73 to nothing win over Arkansas State. They were dominant uh, on both sides of the ball, even on special teams. Uh, and just a huge, huge day, to, or a huge way to start the year uh, for Brent Venables. And uh, we have, uh, not Bob, we'll get the intros fixed, I promise. I heard a lot about that today. That becomes priority this week. Uh, Eddie McQuish, Eddie McQuish, Eddie. Eddie <laughs> what a roaring Josh, start! Man. I've had a rough night. I've had a very Josh McQuishton. It actually joins us. Josh, great to have you on the post game pod. Eddie Radosovich, uh, not Bob Prisbillo, but George Stoya. Uh, I'm just I'm a little sidetracked also because OSU is so bad at football apparently. Yeah, that was not a great uh, performance. They have uh, quarterback, no issues. quarterbacks. Yeah. yeah, they have three quarterbacks that they played tonight. It's weird when you ignore the portal in recruiting, you suddenly have problems. It's hard to believe. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was a lot of damage done that uh, can't just be fixed by saying you've changed your attitude. So, I mean, look at the players walk they, up the they field look for like they lost. Oh, my God. Yeah. They, are, they don't know. Well, there's one guy that's happy. Well, because um, he played. <laughs> Gunner Gunny played the entire fourth quarter. Did he really? Yeah. Yeah, he, well, he won them basically I mean, the game. Basically so won he won them was, the game. Really? Yeah. Wow. I was too busy with equipment issues. Uh, anyway, back to uh, Norman uh, as the Sooners uh, handily win it over. I, I, Josh, I don't know that I've been as impressed by an opening win in a very long time. And, and obviously the opponent uh, much further down than we expected coming into this thing. They had a lot of people. Uh, Eddie and, and George talked to uh, Matt Stoltz earlier this week, and he talked about all the transfers that came in. Uh, I think you and I kind of saw the same thing. The only real concern I had, I had one of my buddies was like, I don't know if I thought Jared Kanek played a great game, but I came out of that wondering, is this team going to be able to rush the passer? That was really my only criticism. Yeah, I, I think that's that's a clear area of concern. And I mean, I, I will grant the argument that, you know, they were doing a lot of quick three-step drops. They were sure. trying to get rid of the ball. They knew they couldn't match up up front. So, I know you was clearly I mean, I, very basic defensively. They were just yes, rushing forward. Yes. They, there was no uh, exotic blitzing going on today. And, and you know, and they could they could do that because, you know, uh, Arkansas State, like, like Brent said in the post game, was doing seven, eight-man protections, you know, running three, you know, two or three guys out and, Oklahoma's dropping eight and you know the, it was just it was a mismatch all the way around but I you know at the same time it's one of those things where I think it creates this false positive like well you know he was getting rid of the ball quick it would have been fine otherwise we don't know that like I, it's just an unknown like I think it's still a valid question do I think do I feel better about playmakers at receiver after this game yeah I do I think that's an I, that's a question that I had that I think there's some reason for belief do I think that um, the back seven's going to be okay. Yeah, I saw a lot there that I really liked. The Gentry Williams looks like he might be special. We'll get into all that, but I, I just think that is that remains a valid question. Well, I think you know all the stuff you're talking about. We're viewing this season through the lens of being SEC ready, and I mean, uh, I, I I don't care about you trolls out there like Carrie's it, negative. He's always pretty, so negative. It is pretty insane that I think anything for. 90 I, I, 80 to 85 percent of the fan base if they don't win nine or ten games it's a failure of a season sure well i, I don't think that's I, out of out of out of you know i don't think that's bad and I, looking around the big 12 today if they don't play for a big 12 championship i mean ooh. i know that it's one week in it's early <laughs> baylor it's early. got baylor got their ass kicked at home texas state it's embarrassing I, it's an embarrassing guys, day for the big 12 TCU, that is, oh man, TCU, West Virginia is getting their ass kicked. They I mean, should kick them out of the league. They, 
I'm Te- glad OU Texas was didn't this look great till the no. second half. I mean, it's it's bad. I mean, OU's really the only team that. And again, they're playing Arkansas State, and what the hell? Granted, but like, Texas did end up winning by like thirty something. But OU throttled the team today. Yeah. I mean, a Division One team. OU throttled it today. I like, mean, that's I, the that's the look. I don't I, know how good Arkansas. Like, I don't either. They're I, not good. They're I, not. I don't think that they're the worst team in the country. They're but, the they're the victim of getting one of these but, transfer quarterbacks that wasn't really good in the first place. Yeah. But here's the thing with Oklahoma. They play you we just tried to come up with the flaws and if, if the only flaw we can come up with is oh we don't know if they have a good pass rush, that's a pretty a good four man rush. They did yeah. what they were supposed yeah. to do today to a T. I mean, I you look back at last year, people forget that UTEP game, it was twenty one to ten in the second quarter, the home opener last year. I mean, well, I, guys, all I'm saying is this. It, it's just through the lens of SEC ready. I mean, that's everything that we're going to be doing this season. And yes, they still have to win nine or 10 games or whatever it is. But, you know, you look at this team, it looks really good. Uh, are they SEC ready? Yeah, we'll find out. Today didn't prove whether they were or not. Today Correct. proved that the fans are not SEC ready, judging by what I saw from George Stoy on Lindsay Street before the game. Just a pathetic performance. And I, it honestly... It irritated me, and I think some people thought I was joking on Twitter, replying to some of the, the mm-hmm. trolls. I am not joking. I mean, every all these fans have complained about the tailgating and the game day atmosphere. Well, it's a two way street, buddy. And Joe sees greedy and all this. It's and- a two way street. You got to show up, and I have the frat boys in my DMs because I said part of it was Greek life didn't show up. Eddie, you can defend them if you want, but I, I mean, just it, it's like, disappointing. It's just like I don't understand. I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was going to be like a huge party over there. I really did. Yeah, and there was no Maybe one. Maybe there were two tents, from what I could tell. Huge yeah. pussies now. Yeah, and when I got, there's I a, do think they. All, I think there are a lot of huge pussies out there because people were sitting there like it was eleven o'clock. It was it, a thousand degrees. What do you expect? Yeah, and all you, those people are. You're not from SEC home. ready. Well, they're you're not from SEC home. ready. Just like the frat guys in my DM saying, "Well, you know, we can't underage drink over there." Well. SEC ready is saying, who cares? I'll take the PI. I'll pay the money. <laughs> I just think it that's, that's such a such a, exactly such a cop word. out. I agree more. That's beautiful. Such a it, cop it is out. a cop out. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, if a fraternity guy I'm a fraternity told me guy that, and that's a I I don't I be believe like, what I don't believe that real fraternity people are saying that they were worried about underage drinking. Probably a bad house. Oh, it's it's well again. That's such it's an excuse. Pro- it sounds, where we didn't want to do it. It sounds yes. like one of those types of houses that's second in the state, and the the oh yeah top one isn't in Norman. It was very disappointing. Hopefully, it's better next week. Uh, you know, and I I I will give them an out saying the uh, eleven a.m. game. It, it is what it is, but. It was supposed to be really hot. It was really hot down in Norman today, but you said by the fourth quarter it was kind of miserable. It was miserable. It was it was one hundred percent miserable. Uh, that that's the first time too in a fourth quarter, and I said this on the uh, the YouTube show that we did uh, after the game. That's the first time that like they were literally standing and just waiting for the uh, clock to run down. Yeah, like with thirteen minutes left in the fourth quarter. By the way, oh my god, that hit that Davis Bevel took today. I don't know if you had a good up. look at, at that. Yeah, ending. he got lit up. Oh he my got lit god. Up. Like like we and understand I feel bad. Like, like he actually like he did get hurt. Yes. I mean, I was worried like crushed like sternum or something. I think I mean, it's like, uh, MCL. Ooh, is that it? Yeah. That's what well, that's what Brent said after the game. Uh and he was being basically like you know, he was being dragged off. They took him right. to the locker you can room. Tell Hit one of his legs was not working yeah, correctly. It, it sucks. I I feel bad for him. He's gotten a bad rap, and obviously because he's not the best quarterback in the entire world, but really good guy. I that sucks that he got hurt. How about Tawi well, Walker? What Sorry, about Josh. what about him? <laughs> let's do it. Let's. let's do I mean, it. Here's let's, talk, the thing. let's talk about the game though. One thing though, I I never shit on Tawi Walker. I never shit. I just shit yeah, you, on you. Shit on, I shit me. on George <laughs> yeah. for writing the story. <laughs> No, he was great today. I mean, you know, he is what we we thought he was, though. He's a big physical guy. Uh, by the way, George, who did lead the team in carries today? Javante Barnes. Yeah. I never, I never denied that he would. He wouldn't. Can 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 everybody coexist? <laughs> well, like, I think, with, I think no, that, that doesn't with, make it for with, a good with, podcast. In all of those, no, I'm talking about like all the running backs. Can they coexist where they're going to play? Literally three or four of those guys a game. I think so, but well, I thought Javante when he got the ball, he looked he the best. Yeah. yeah, I mean Tawi though. He, I mean Tawi was, was more productive. Eight, yeah, eight I mean, carries for forty-four yards. If, That's pretty if good. you told me that 
and Josh, I don't know what you would think about this, but like Javante Barnes being the number one running back with Tawi Walker being the sidekick, I could buy into that. Hey, and Galen Smothers well, looked pretty good. And Gavin Sawchuk, obviously, uh, he, he he was out. He yeah. was held out. That was the coach's decision. Him and uh, R. Mason Thomas both. The the guy who flashed for me, you know, more than Smothers was Caleb Hicks. I thought Hicks showed yeah. some some burst there late in the game. Now again, it's late. Like Eddie's talking about, everybody was dog tired by the fourth quarter. Like I get it. There there's some you know um, perception issue there that they can mess with you a little bit. But I yeah, I mean, you throw Sawchuck into that group. I mean that that room gets ultra competitive. I mean, we knew that was a good room, but seeing it now with Tawi clearly being a guy that has, you know, that can have a role, can be an impact player. You should have zero short yardage problems with Tawi Walker yes. on your team. And that well, should, would, should be his specialty. And I mean, look, I you can put him out there in first, second, third down. I mean, I thought he ran better. I thought he ran better, but he was more productive, obviously, than, than uh, Javante Barnes. I still feel like, Josh, I still feel like Javante Barnes is that guy it's still trying to figure out the, the speed of the college game a little bit. I, I, do you guys, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like at times he almost runs to contact. Like he's looking for right. to lower his shoulder to somebody. I'm like, no, man, you can run to space. Like, it's okay. You don't have to do that. He's like the Brandon Average of running backs. Like, you don't have to kill everybody. <laughs> like, just go find some room. Make make, make the bigger play. That's okay. Um, and, I mean, as a guy who loves downhill football, like, I love the way he plays. That's why I've always been a huge fan of his. But, like, he has some run birth. to the he light. Yeah. Suddenness. Yeah. Like, he doesn't have to play that way. Not tall we. Like Tawi probably runs four seven five. He's not going to run away from anybody. Like he's got to play his game. But Barnes, like, there's more to you. You you can you can venture out a little bit. Are we uh, basically kind of overlooking the biggest story of the day to me? I thought Dylan Gabriel was great. Yeah, I I mean I think it's a two part story though. It's first half, second half because Jackson Arnold was damn good Jackson, too. Yeah, I mean the quarterback play from Oklahoma today was unbelievable. Actually, they, they I'll combined give you- to go twenty of. 33 or 30, 30 of 33, 33 for 422 and three touchdowns. Jackson I'll give Arnold you the and throw biggest, completion. I'll give you the bigger story. Gavin Freeman. Jaden Gibson. Jaden Gibson. Yeah. I agree. I think I think Jaden Gibson. How about Gibson. the wide receiver unit just in general? Yeah. I, I mean, Andrew I, Anthony I had a nice play wide, early. Andre Anthony probably would have had a hundred something yards if he wouldn't have just been tackled, tackled. Yep. like two or three yep. times. And Gay, I will say the one bad throw I thought Gabriel had today. Anthony had his guy beat, and he ended up getting yep. tackled on the PI. That should have been a touchdown yeah. if he throws Did, that on time. Guys, like going you, to the George North end zone. Eddie, yeah. You were, you were there. Like from the broadcast, that looked funky coming out of his hand. Like yes. it didn't come out right. Like, I think it slipped. It looked like it went vertical real fast. Like something looked wrong. He he immediately after too like was doing his throwing motion as if he just. I, I think he maybe paused i don't know what it was but it definitely came out weird but i thought i thought gabriel looked great it was i didn't realize it was his highest completion percentage in his career in a game 86 percent 19 of 22 i saw I and saw he was th- only second best on his own team yeah i saw somebody tweeting out and it wasn't an ou fan that tweeted it out he's like my favorite tradition is watching ou play a crappy team and have the quarterback go 18 for 18 to start the game yeah, <laughs> he was really good. All I, those guys win Heisman's, though, when they do that. I thought it was funny after the game. Somebody asked Jackson Arnold, were you nervous? And he's like, we were up 45 to zero. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I be nervous? That's well, and so they, they ran him a lot more. I was kind of like, hey, look, he's your backup quarterback. Like, yeah, let's not get too crazy. Somebody asked Levy about it. And he was like, I wanted to get him a hit. And I guess like, Jackson, he after, I guess after the first drive, Jackson got on the the mic or whatever with, with Levy and said, I want to run the ball. And so they, they went to it there on that second drive. And you can see badass. he's going to have some big runs in his career. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, Trammell was asking him after the game if, they, you know, him and Levy, if if they thought he could be like a goal line guy. And Jackson kind of smirked at that. And I wonder if they I, do put in some packages. There is no way that they walk into the Cotton Bowl without some type of Jackson Arnold package. Yeah. Like they – I I just – there's no way that they're not going to do that. I think Levy likes doing that stuff too much and drawing stuff up for you know different players, whether it be a Gavin Freeman or Jalil Farouk or whoever. And he's not he's not Caleb Williams when he runs the ball, obviously, but he can. He's he, better. He, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But he he sees things really well as a runner. Here's the thing. You know it's he, it's. I'm sorry, Josh. Um, it is 
it's almost it almost seems like it's a pipe dream that we're going to go through a season and things will go this smoothly between the oh, quarterbacks yeah. positions yeah, like it's you be never a have a you never have a guy that plays as well as Dylan Gabriel did today and then also has this superstar way I mean a little bit with Kyler Murray I guess when Baker was in his final year but he'd be a three-year starter um and you knew every time Kyler came into the game something big was probably going to happen uh, so maybe yeah we're spoiled at Oklahoma we've seen that before but you don't see it everywhere else well, I, I mean, and the, the kid turned 19 today. Like, I mean, that that's, the, you know, you talk about Kyler. Like, Kyler's dad was a quarterback. He spent four years in the, you know, three years in the system, four years in college. Like, there was all these reasons for him to be what he became, you know, that kind of deal. So that, that's just wild. But, um, you know, talking about Arnold running, I, just, I, I, I had a thought. Does he kind of remind you guys a little bit of the Garrett Green kid from West Virginia? Like, not like explosive, but kind of slippery. Yeah. Like, he just kind of finds a way to keep moving up field. Like, it's, it's, and Garrett he's Green, a little he, more sudden than you think. See, to me, Garrett Green runs more like a Gavin Freeman than, than what Jackson Arnold does. Like, that's a mm. better comparison to me. Like, just a Gavin Freeman? super switch, super quick guy, small. Gavin Freeman's fast as f. I realize that I'm saying it. I would I would say he's clo- Gavin Green is closer to him than he is to Jackson Arnold. G- Green is faster than Jackson. I would totally agree with that. Just like I just kind of mean in the way that like he's not like a. I wouldn't say he's like, oh, he's inherently dangerous when he runs, but like he's very effective. Like he's going to get everything that's there to get and then he's going to get down. I think he, I, and maybe it's because he wears the same number. I think he reminds me a little bit of Blake Bell. He's not as big as Blake Bell, but in terms of running he's downhill. He's faster and, than Blake. Yeah, but he, I mean, he, I think he just sees the holes really well and he's hard to tackle. Like I, he's and he, slippery. Yeah. Yeah. And he, when he gets, and open, he's faster than you think. He yeah. Is. When he gets out in open space, he can go. We saw that at the uh, in in high school. I mean, when he mm-hmm. would just pull away from guys down in the uh, you know the biggest classification down in Texas, he was. Well, you knew when he was on the same field as Peyton Bowen, and he still looked fast. You're like, okay, he's not. He's he's a little bit better than average. Even when we're trying to talk well about Dylan Gabriel, we ended up in a big discussion about Jackson Arnold. Yeah, I I mean it just. Like I said, I, I, now I, I will say, and we all know I've been tough on Gabriel. I, I thought he that was the best I've seen him throw the ball. Like, I thought it was really good. That one that George mentioned that looked like it just got away from it. It was clearly abnormal from the rest of the day. But there's just, like, uh, again, on some of those deep balls, like, he throws a nice deep ball. But time and again, like, I don't know if he, you know, he was a little late getting it out there or what it was. But, like, Anthony would have a step or two that he'd have to give up that you're like, well, would Arnold just drive that ball down the field? Like, I mean, it's not fair. I get it. You're, 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 you know, there's mistakes that Arnold would make that Gabriel wouldn't. So there's a give and take there. But that's just one of those things where I'm like, I can't get it out of my head. Some of these things that against Arkansas State don't matter, but down the road they may. You think about that one deep throw that Arnold had that he overthrew the receiver. I can't remember who the receiver was on that play. Uh, but after that, I was like, okay, that's an arm. And you compare that to, like, when General Booty went out there and tried to throw a deep ball, and it was just, like, a flailing to get the receiver. Arnold's throw to Gibson was phenomenal. The and touchdown. Gibson, and Gibson made a better catch, but right. the ball was just unreal. It's also really funny that the, when he came into the game, the ovation that Jackson yeah. Arnold got today, <laughs> I in the back of my brain, I was like, man, I wonder if Gabriel, like, it's like, God damn it. I'm sure he is a little bit. Like, I, and, you know, he was the first person out there after he threw the touchdown and, you know, celebrating with him and all that kind of stuff. It just, it's awkward. It was very awkward post game too. And somebody, I don't know who it was, asked uh, Arnold, what do you think you do better than Dylan Gabriel? <laughs> Literally straight up <laughs> asked him that. And Jackson was like, uh, I think we're both very good quarterbacks. <laughs> I was just like, Jesus, man. Go ahead and shit on the starter. Go ahead. Let's start a controversy in week one. Yeah, let's let's maybe wait till at least like six games into the season when you guys have <laughs> actually become really friend, real friends. Like, no, but I mean, Dylan Gabriel, nineteen to twenty-two, three hundred eight yards, two touchdowns, his long of fifty-two. Jackson Arnold, perfect, eleven for eleven, one hundred fourteen yards and one touchdown. Uh, so it was a it was a great day for the offense and a great day for Jeff Levy. You know, in the first series, they get to it third down. On their third play, and you're like, okay, uh, is this going to be another three and out? They get it, they pick it up, and then they go right down and score quickly. I think that was the Drake Stoops um, to the corner of the end zone that finished yeah. off that first drive. Yeah. yeah. So, 
I mean, 45 points in the first half were the third uh, most ever in a season opener, uh, trailing only the 50 in 2002 against UT Chattanooga and 49 in uh, 2007 against North Texas. Well, and you mentioned it. Gavin Freeman's the reason that it got out of hand so early. The punt return. That I was gotta, electric. I got to be honest. I didn't even – it didn't register with me that he was back there fielding the punt. Yeah. And then when I saw him take off, I was like, that's not Drake Stoops because he was a lightning bolt. Yeah, he's – I mean, and it's so kind of cliche, but, you know, everybody, and it was kind of like the talking point of everything that was talked about after the game, George, that every week you heard he was doing something like insane at practice. And I think this is just kind of another example that like this kid is, I don't want to say like unbelievable because it's very believable now, but he, it just seems like he has a knack for making huge plays. Yeah. And it, it the punt return to, you saw it open up in the press box. He made the one. He made the one cut up field, and it was like, all right, game over. He's he's, and then he made the net, the other cut down the field. I thought it was also cool. You saw a bunch of freshmen on the uh, on that return. I mean, Omosigo was throwing blocks. He was the one running down side by side with him. Uh, but oh shit, okay, yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I thought it was, I thought it was Marcus Major. I thought I was like, it was too, but my, it was almost the Sigo. first thing in my brain. I go, why is Marcus Major on punt return? No, yeah, it was almost Sigo. Okay, I, I'm I'm in the exact same boat. Okay. I saw the video and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, no, and he he yeah, he was the one that threw that final block. So I don't know. He's he's a special kid. I they I they have more playmakers than and and we'll see what again we'll see what right. it looks like right. down the line. But I do think you feel a lot better about. They're just playmaking abilities with w- whether it's Freeman, Gibson looked, you know, incredible. Nick Anderson had his had his. Yeah, moments. he looked good when he was out. I there. mean, Anthony was running by dudes. I mean, even LV Bunkley Shelton can give you something. I was almost more encouraged that Andre Anthony was getting the pass interference calls than the catches that he actually made. Yeah, because that means he's getting open. Guys, Jaquez Petaway had nine catches today. Yeah, yeah. they were just like, feeding him the rock in the third quarter. It was yeah. like basically the Petaway show in the uh, second half. Yeah, I mean, and uh, again, for for OU fans that are, you know, always projecting, like, you know, that have the brain like I do, Arnold and him, that that looks good. Like, that that looks like a future fifth that's going to work out fine. But I agree with you guys. Everybody's talking about Gibson, and I get it. But Nick Anderson, some of the stuff he was doing out there, um, and the thing that will go unappreciated, the blocking outside was awesome. I mean, really good. That the the Caleb Hicks touchdown run. That's all the receiver blocking outside. That's that's a clear growth moment from last year, where I thought they struggled at times with that. And here's the thing, you know, back to the receiver situation. I liked is it, it it's almost like not. I don't think it's planned, but if Jackson Arnold is going out there and he is working to get the ball to Nick Anderson and Jaquez Petaway and Jaden Gibson, like he's working with his future group of receivers. I like that. I like that. You know, it's a lot better than, you know, sticking him out there with Jalil Farouk and, uh, you know, Drake Stoops. And and you could put Gavin Freeman in his camp, I'm sure. Uh, But to me, that alleviates some of the, you know, if that's the way he's working, it alleviates a little bit of the looking over my shoulder if I'm Dylan Gabriel. You see what I'm saying? Like, oh, he's working with his young people. Yeah. No, I agree. I mean, even along the offensive line. I mean, like the, the that second O-line group got a lot of run there in the second half. And I thought held up pretty well, considering, you know, what we kind of know, what we kind of expect of that group, knowing they're young and still kind of figuring a lot of it out. But I thought they did a pretty nice job in run blocking. They kept him clean for the most part. Like, and I, again, we know it's an overmatched opponent, but that's a, that's a group that doesn't have a lot of experience in general, much less playing together. So... I, I thought there were a lot of positives for the offense beyond just that first group being, you know, frankly, wildly too much for Arkansas State to deal with. I thought it was pretty interesting, too, that uh, Troy Everett was the first offensive yep. lineman to come into the game today for Savion Bird. Ah. Well, we have we have to talk about Cade Mattire as well. What about him? Or I thought... Who, you said Cade had broke his hand or something. Cade, Cade McIntyre. McIntyre. Oh, Cade McIntyre. Yeah, they took him out in the fourth quarter, and uh, he, they took him to the locker room. He had a splint on his – I don't know. It was like a – I guess it was a splint. Yeah. I'm, I'm really not sure, but they had his helmet. and uh, He I, had a you really know, nice play in the game. Honestly, tight end-wise, Stogner doesn't catch a ball today, and I thought the tight end group was really good. Blake Smith. Blake Smith had a hey, nice play. Broke a nice little play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just think they're going to uh, do more four-wide stuff. I think you're going to yep. see them do well, some if different. You have the playmakers that you saw today. Yeah. 
No, I thought it's not a bad situation. McIntyre. I mean, he that was another guy like. He turned the corner, and I didn't see that happen. Like he, he had a lot more burst than I expected, because he and he the way he ran the ball, Josh. It was like he was going for a touchdown. Like as soon as yeah. he got around that corner, he was like, "Screw this! I'm going to score." The Nebraska kids are; they just want to score. Oh, I mean, y- y- you're right. Like, and Kerry, I'm learning these numbers. I'm sure fans are doing the same. I was like, 19. Who the hell is that? And then I look at the roster, I'm like, oh, crap, yeah, like that looks good. You know, and you're kind of like, okay, maybe maybe they could find a role for him where he's, you know, he's not going to be your full-time guy, but when you want to throw the ball, you want to do some underneath stuff, kind of like, you know, like that play itself. Okay, maybe Cade McIntyre's got the kind of athleticism you can get away with that. But, yeah, I mean, that wasn't a, that wasn't a guy that was like, oh, crap, I got the ball. Like that was a guy looking to go score. You're 100% right. How about – OU on third downs today. Yeah. I know situational football. Both sides. Both sides, too. OU, offense and defense. They were 11 of 14 on third down on offense. Guess what they were last year against UTEP? It was Th- bad. Three for eight. Against Kent State, they were three for 12. Yeah. It was bad. I mean, I think that that's where you start talking about, you know, this year it, it's it's going to be measured on, you know, if they can get to that nine or w- ten win total. These first five games especially – uh, how do you measure, like, are they getting better or are they better where they're at right now than they were where they were a year ago? And I think that that's where you start, like, you looking you look at today compared to last year, and they were dominant at times today. It looked yeah. like a, a good, solid football product. Now, they, they've only played four quarters, so we're not going to crown anybody. But how many but. times – here's my point, though, and I wrote this in my story. How many times last year could you say, man, they played a great game what, first quarter to fourth quarter in sure. this game. Sure. And that's that's the very, point where you have to be is the, the answer. Ball, yeah. yeah. Very little is the answer. Even in the six games that they won. Yeah. I mean, Bedlam, no. Well, Guys, look, even even considering who they played, I don't feel that weird saying that's as good a performance as I've seen a Brent Venable's team put together. It's yeah. fair. Yeah, and, you know, by the way, just to kind of go over some stats here for you, uh, Sooners held Arkansas State uh, to 208 total yards. OU's offense was able to put up uh, 642, uh, 36 first downs to Arkansas State, barely got into double digits with 10, and a couple of those penalties. I, that was another thing today. Penalties, Arkansas State killed themselves. I thought, I thought Oklahoma looked fairly disciplined. Uh, and OU averaged 7.8 yards per play from scrimmage. I think we've known, like, in the past, we've seen Heisman Trophy guys, Lincoln's offense, like, they would average 10 yards, you know, per play, uh, and even sometimes, like, 10 yards per snap. So you're getting closer to that type of production on offense, and we saw nothing close to that really a year ago. I mean, even the Nebraska game ended up being a route, but that game started out kind of rough as well. They had some trick plays uh, where they scored a touchdown on. Uh, today, there was no trick. They, they went out, just lined up, played very base on offense, very base on defense, got some special teams help, uh, and just whipped another team. And, and like you said, to the degree that they did it for a home opener, it's hard to think. But even like Baker's first game, like I remember against Akron, like that wasn't a, that wasn't a dominating performance. Yeah. Do you want to talk about defense? Yes, I do. Um, Josh... I mean, I know this is, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about the linebacker position. Uh, I want to talk about that, too, because I know I said earlier, like, I got a buddy who's like, I don't know about Jared Connect. And, and I don't think anybody was really, you know, on the front seven just had a great day, but everybody was solid. Uh, there was, I mean, I thought, I, you know, I, I saw some good things out of Justin Harrington, which I enjoyed, you know, you, you were hoping for. Uh, but really, it was the secondary, I thought, in, in, um, you know, you wondered, Woody Washington had a lot of pass breakups today and he was fantastic in coverage. Uh, but we were always wondering about that other corner and, you know, the guy that we thought really stood out today of the young uh, guys. Guys and just, I mean, Kerry, you know, you're, you're with me, you know, watching the broadcast, like just even watching him on TV, you're like, he doesn't look he like OU yeah. corners. Like he looks, that's a different person. And that that's a you know we keep talking about SEC ready. That's an SEC corner. That's what they look like. And no one and, and that's what's like. And I think somebody asked the question. It may even have been George. Um, you know something about no. I, I think it was Myron Patton. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, and we're talking about Gentry Williams because we haven't said his name. Yeah, yet. yeah. 
a- asking about Gentry, you know, kind of being known for speed and like, but I, you know, he really liked that hit. What I loved about the big hit was, wasn't, okay, great. He made the hit. That's fine. But a few plays before he'd come in and stuff the run, like inside the tackle box, like he'd made a nice play in the run game, not out wide, but on that play itself, he read it so fast. Like the, the receiver couldn't even get out to get on the block and you throw Gentry speed into it. That, that play was dead before, you know, like before the quarterback had ever thrown the ball because Gentry saw it, read it, and broke on it immediately. So, like I said, I, it's not just, oh, he's really physically talented. Like, he's seeing it. He's seeing it the way Brent wants him to. Also, for those wondering, uh, Josiah Wagner, I think, was a little banged up. He didn't play today. Um, was Kendall, it, Dolby, uh, was Kendall Dolby got him? hurt. He, he was in for a few plays. He got hurt. Uh, but I think Wagner's not serious. He was out there for warm-ups, just wasn't a full participant. So, we'll see. But, yeah, I thought Gentry was great. Um I mean, he might have been the best player on the defense today. I, I thought Reggie Pearson came up and made some nice plays. He had the the bonehead play where he hit the quarterback out of bounds. It was a nice hit, but um, I was I was a great way to start the game. I thought. Yeah, I thought Bowman was solid back there. I mean, I I think they have just so many guys at safety. I thought even Key Lawrence made some nice plays uh, at times. Um, how about Kip Lewis being the first linebacker? In I think he's a ball player. I think he is too. I think he uh, I think he's going to play a lot. That that's quickly becoming a man crush of mine. Like I, I just like one of the first plays I saw him, they had him lined up over a tight end, and I looked. I want to say the kid from uh, from Arkansas State was like two forty, and Lewis stands him up and for and flushes the run outside, like just forces the the back wide, and you're like, I, I okay, he's two ten, he's not as big as you want him to be, but do I care if he's making the plays he needs to make? Like I mean, he's doing the stuff he's supposed to do. So I saw some uh, good stuff from Kobe McKenzie today yeah. too. Yeah. Kobe McKenzie yeah, that, was really good in the second half. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the one that, that everybody will knock Canick for, go back and watch that. He's showing blitz, and he's he's left – or excuse me, uh, in the def- defense, he's left of the center and has to come across to cover the slot 10 yards down the field. Now, I don't know if he should have read that differently and maybe given himself a little leeway or he just has to be in that gap showing that blitz for that particular package. But he had to cover a lot of ground, and he damn near did it. Um, but, I mean, it, 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 there's I, – guys, I don't know many linebackers in the country. I don't know if Harold Perkins is covering that ground to get over there and make that play. So something either – either he needed to do something better pre-snap – or th- there was something off because you can't expect that guy to make that play. I mean, I, I think defensively, too, it was just such a step in the right direction from where this thing has been. Just clean football. Tackling was good. It just seemed like everything, like even the look of some of the players out there, they they look better than they are. Or, I mean, than, I think than J- they were. Justin Harrington looks the part. I mean, I, I know we've said he he does, but... I thought he looked really good out there, like actually playing today. He made some nice tackles, but yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I you want to see more from the defensive line? That's the one spot that I'm like, okay. And and Bothroyd got close a couple times. He had the one on the uh, third down where he yeah. I think he hit the arm of the quarterback. Um, it was almost a strip sack, but um, we didn't see much of Adabare out there. I, I he mean, he played really late. Yeah, you were probably going down to the a, field when he was out there. Most he played a lot in the fourth quarter. Yeah. But I, I thought we might thought we might see surprising things with, with yeah. I, like I think the two surprises for me was Joe Jacoby Johnson played a lot. Yeah. Jacoby Johnson then, was in the game in the second quarter. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think he looks really didn't good. Play much at all. By the way, Eddie, would you like to talk about number twenty six who ripped that ball out of the uh, ball? Kenai Walker. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give credit to uh, Peyton Bowen for the hit. I mean, Peyton Bowen did kind of serve him up there. Yeah. Peyton Bowen looked good too, by the way. Peyton Bowen uh, delivers a pop a little bit differently than everybody else, and Reggie Pearson's very physical. But we knew that coming in. Reggie Pearson, he came up and made some tackles today in the run game that I was like, I don't remember the last time they had a safety that would just come up and make yeah, a play. He like likes that. the physicality. I thought, yeah. I thought well, for the most part, I thought Key Lawrence played pretty well today. Yeah, yeah. And- yeah. And what I liked from Pearson was after that stupid penalty, which guys stop trying to excuse that it's a dumb penalty. You just don't don't do that. I'm not to, obviously not talking to any of you all. Like I've had some people on on Twitter like, oh, it, you know, it wasn't Texas. He can get no, no, like don't do that. But 
literally the next play, he comes up and makes, I believe it was a tackle, tackle for, loss. for loss. Yeah, yes. he did, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, and you're like, okay, that's the way you respond to that. Perfect. Like, no, th- And that's, that's some of that mentality that they talk about. Like, Because, guys, we know. Two three years ago, that starts a snowball, and that's a touchdown drive. Like, like we we know one hundred percent. Also, and I hate to bring his name up, but Justin Burles is now making that play. Which Still we talked trays, about a lot of JD. plays. Which one? The coming up and making I'm the tackle for loss. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> fair, Gary. <laughs> fair. I'm just thinking of that one play, but I'm just like. Man. It, no, it, it, I I will say this too. The, to defend Reggie Pearson on the on the replay. I think he was expecting just to kind of give the quarterback a little chip there on the sideline, but the quarterback did an all-time Oscar awarding, you know, Oscar awarded, uh, uh, Oscar nominated, you know, appearance there. But he he really knew that he was standing out, you know, out of bounds, and he took a flop, and he did it really well. But he went down like you would have thought he got hit, you know, by by a freaking truck. Well, and the other thing was, it looked like Pearson started to pull up and let off, mm-hmm. and the quarterback kind of moves toward him. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm going to create some contact. I'm like, well, dude, if you're going to do that, then, you know, game on. <laughs> but, at this, I mean, you, just, you have to know the situation. Like, you got to just let that go. And really, you know, the one thing that I take from the defense today is, remember all the times last year Brent was talking about, we got to have 11 guys playing together. We got to have people not trying to do other people's jobs. Uh, and then getting, like, Stutzman, I think, went through that a lot. Like, he was trying to cover up for other people that weren't doing their jobs. It just seemed like you had 11 players out there that were all just doing their jobs. Nobody was trying to be a superhero. Uh, and, and look at the tackles, you know, the tackle sheet. I mean, no, Danny Stutzman led the team in tackles in four. He was tied by Kobe McKenzie. Like, no one had double digit tackles. Uh, it was just everybody there going out and doing a job, uh, and it, it looked pretty seamless. There's, I, I, again, it's hard to find a lot of flaws in that performance. I mean, again, I know we, we're all thinking you just auto, have that auto preface of we know who they're playing. Like, we, we get it. But still, I mean, that wasn't like an FCS team. Like, I mean, that, that, that was – that's a G5 team that has some talent. The Jeff Foreman kid is a good receiver. Um, you know, the the other kid that I know they talked about in the broadcast is still coming back full speed. He was playing for Shane Beamer. He was out there yeah, with Stockton Corey last Rucker. year. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, like, th- that's not a they, roster devoid of talent. They uh, There's some people, I was talking to some folks at Arkansas State today at the game, and they think that they're going to make a bowl game. So, I mean, I, I don't know after that performance, but... Uh, I think Central Arkansas can beat them after watching. Yeah, well, you said that uh, they got to figure Jones out something was, at quarterback. That kid yeah. ain't it. Did you guys see the Butch Jones quote that he said after the game? Yes, about OU, just about yeah. the speed and stuff. He said that that they look like a totally different team than what they watched on tape from a year ago. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, somewhat they are. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, but I mean, think about all the different bodies that are out there now. I mean, yeah. and it's nobody played like a transfer who was lost today. I thought like. I did, yes. Now, do we have a Desan McCullough? I know he came I out in a just, boot. It's just sprained ankle. Okay. Yeah. He was over on the sidelines talking shit to everybody on, like, yeah. like literally just yelling at Also, people. so much fun when they have him and Harrington out on the field. They, they had both And they of them. were out there together, yeah. Yeah, and then that's when McCulloch had that pass breakup. They were both out there on the field on that play. I, I, I'm, I'm – the – the ball just finds that kid. Yeah. I, I don't know how else to explain it. Like, when there is a big play to be made, he's usually making it. And I that's that's got more value for me, I think, than than maybe some others. Because, you know, like you guys mentioned Harrington. I, I didn't – I mean, like, I, I guess in ways it's good because you didn't notice him, but I didn't notice him. Like, it was just like, okay, yeah, he, he's out there. He made a couple – he made a couple you of didn't tackles see him in space, and that's valuable. On a, yeah. I mean, usually he's going to yeah, whiff on yeah. a tackle in open space, and he didn't do any of that. No, no. It, it was no, solid. And, and you're just like, hmm. And with the defensive line, it's like, yeah, nobody really stood out, but it's not like Arkansas State was able to run the ball today. I mean. Well, they didn't run the yeah. ball, and I, I don't think they exactly, you know, and, and you asked Brent about the pass rush stuff. Yeah. I don't think that there were just a bunch of different opportunities for them just to pin their ears back and get after him. No. And next next week will be a better test. I think SMU is a good football team, and I think that they're they're gonna they're gonna score. They're gonna, they're gonna at least test a defense that looked somewhat pretty good. Yeah, Rhett Lashley, yep. their offensive coordinator. Yeah, I mean, Justin Josh, you Stone. went and saw the Stone kid in high school, didn't you? 
Yeah, I, I, I am a huge fan, of, or at least I was. Like, I, I want to, you know, obviously this week I'll, I'll watch some video and, you know, I'll may do a under the hood. I don't know. I hadn't quite decided yet, but um, there is that that kid has all the physical tools and that offense is very effective. Like, they're going to, like, people thinking OU is going to go, you know, hold them to 10 points. Don't do that. Like, that that's an offense very capable of coming in and putting, putting points in the 20s. Like, now, Oh, you may put up another big number. Like that's absolutely possible. But SMU is a talented team. They got plenty of guys. They got several guys that OU wanted at one point or another. Yeah. So, um, you know, like I said, that's a good team that I think, and it's it's a nice step. Like Oklahoma goes out, dominates a lesser opponent. Okay, now the next step. It, it's going to be a step forward. There's more talent. There's more more scheme that you're going to have to deal with and can challenge you in some different ways. And you get to kind of see where OU is. Like it, it's like I said, it's it's pretty well drawn out for Brent Venables here. Preston Stone went 23 for 37, 248, three touchdowns today in a uh, 38-14 victory over Louisiana Tech. Yeah, that game was close and for a while. Who did who did Law Tech beat last it was week? Thirty one uh, at halftime. Was it really? Yeah. I thought of that, I <laughs> thought I okay, I watched way too many games today. Thirty one nothing. Well, they did outscore him in the second half, though. Me Louisiana, oh, Louisiana Tech, 14-7. You know, <laughs> you, you know where uh, one thing that they do need to work on? I think they might need to get a new holder on the extra points and field goals. I, a little fumbling around? It sounds like there was a little well, bit of an issue on that. Zach Schmidt had to basically, like, read... I guess, like, he had to stop and then read, go at the ball yeah, yeah. Yeah. on one of those. Apparently and he I was had fumbling with that in the report card that I'd given him a decent grade. And I'm like, guys, I don't think that was on him. Like, I mean, he, he was struggling. But yeah, he could only do, do so. <laughs> he could only do so much. Yeah. I will say plaster booted the one punt that he I had thought that today. was a did, really yeah. good punt. Yeah. But it's also probably pretty good that you only sent the, uh, the punter out there one time with, yeah. you know, three and a half minutes left in the game. It is amazing. I mean, it's 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 so much good. It's hard to really, you know, I think we've kind of covered exactly what impressed us most. I mean, going into a, a game like SMU, now we're going to find out, you know, Dylan Gabriel has a game under his belt with Andrell Anthony, with uh, Jaquez Petaway, with, you know, the, the tight ends, uh, even though he might not have been throwing to him as much. But uh, seeing that Jaden Gibson, I mean, I, I got to imagine Dylan Gabriel probably was a little checked out on Jaden Gibson because he's had some big drops. Uh, but – Seeing him make that catch in the end zone, uh, and then another big catch. Uh, I, in you know, we had the we did a whole YouTube video about him. I mean, just a fantastic kid. Like, I think between he and oh, he was on the pulpit after the game. He and Justin Harrington, I think, are two guys probably straightly because of George uh, wrote such good stories about those guys. Like, uh, you're just rooting for those guys. So you're saying Dylan Gabriel left him to die and Jackson Arnold saved him. Is that what, is that what you're saying here? Is this is what we can report? No, I don't think he got in that many snaps <laughs> with uh, Dylan Gabriel. We'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, by the way, guys, we have a tie ball game in Laramie, Wyoming right now. Yeah, they got like a, oh, really? they got a rain delay start. CBS? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's CBS, I think. Yeah, 17-17. Wyoming just ran in from about 20 yards out. On 7-17. Wyoming, Wyoming's not a bad football program, I don't think. No. They're decent. And this this is tailor made for bowl. Like this is exactly his kind of game. Seven seventeen. Oh, CBS Sports Network. Yeah, I would imagine so. Josh, what you what do you think of? Um, I know you mentioned the the uh, backup offensive line. What do you think of the mm -hmm. start? It seemed like the starters. I mean, it, there was no pressure virtually on on Gabriel. But what do you just think of the starting O line? I thought it was solid. Like I, I honestly was expecting a little more dominance than than we got, but I, I thought it was pretty solid. Um, you know, Guyton again. I can't wait to go back and watch because there was a few things I just saw kind of at a glance with Guyton. And you're like, holy crap! Like I mean, he just does a few things every game that you're like, that's not normal. Um, but I will say the guy that stood out to me was Andrew Rame. I thought Andrew Rame yeah. had a great game. Um, be both from like you know you mentioned the pass pro being so good like him picking stuff up him identifying but um i can't remember was it the was it the second touchdown 
touchdown run when they went up 21 nothing when he just buried that guy in the end zone it was and then they highlighted it on the broadcast it was an outstanding block but that was you know some of the better football i've seen andrew rain play also amazing what happens when the snap is good on every play people forget how many how many times last year was it that they had a bad snap and it would just throw off the the play Guys, that that was the thing for me offensively, the efficiency was yeah. so good. Like it just looked very crisp. And, you know, the and we talked a lot in the offseason and we talked about it a little bit last year, but the the pace, I like they'd speed up, they'd slow down, they'd speed like it seemed like they were very much in control of what they wanted to do and the pace they were gonna move at. It, you would really have to nitpick to find something to like truly be angry about today. And I guess it's pretty yeah. obvious in a 73 nothing game. I mean, it was sure. it was about as dominant of a performance as I can remember. Uh, kind of like you said, Kerry, like that's probably the most dominant performance that I've seen a Brent Venables team played from start to finish. And even being able to hold on, like how many times have you seen uh, even some Riley defenses allow people to score at the end of games. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, yeah, but you know, like when the starters came out, <laughs> yeah, that, Brent doesn't, Brent does not differentiate there. He does not, he, his expectation is, and you know, Mike kind of got into, you know, when he'd have a good game and points got scored late, he'd fall into that. But Brent is, I don't think Brent is ever going to be like, well, you know, we had our backups in there. We gave up more than we wanted. Like he's well, going to be like, I mean, those mfers, he's not gonna say that, but he's gonna be. He might. You know, he's thinking it like he might. those guys should not have given up. And like thought, he was out there coaching hard, like a, he's screaming at oh, people he, in the fourth he lost quarter. Lost his mind in the fourth quarter, yeah. and they're up literally seventy three. Because he's nothing. coaching, yeah. I, you know, we'll we'll see how the rotation works out at the uh, defensive end position. But I did think it was pretty interesting that, and it maybe it speaks to where this defense is coming. That Ethan Downs and Grimes were in there so late in the fourth quarter. Uh-huh. Ethan Downs and Grimes are out there, and it's like. I was kind of I didn't feel bad for him by any means, but it's got to get their reps. I th- yeah, but I think that that kind of shows like maybe where this defense is headed. That you know you have two guys and a guy that and Ethan Downs. And I'm not trying to pick on him, but he was like a second team All Big Twelve preseason guy, and he's taking reps in a game that's sixty three to nothing or seventy three to nothing. Yeah. Did it, you notice the entire starting defensive line was uh, transfers? Trace Ford, Rondell Bothroyd. Dejon Terry and Jonah Lawalu. I mean, I, Brent said that a whole new that front was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. It, and, and it they did. had seven. Brand, well, outside of Danny, uh, uh, other than Stutzman. Yeah, I mean, they they again. You go back to everything that Brent said a year ago. He was basically telling you that that thing was going to be shit. By the way, how long did it take him to get in the press conference this this, this year? Uh, I think it was fifty one minutes. Okay, so he still he's yeah, still it was doing a minute. That. It yeah. was a minute. Yeah. <laughs> it was a minute. Jeff Levy was completely in a new attire. Post-game. Yeah, that's the thing. People are showered and, and, and new dressed and like. Ted Roof was in a full, full on suit. Right. It happens. Yeah. Welcome to Brent Venable's post game. Yeah. So, I mean, I know we're getting close to the end here. George, how did it feel to be back, man? Like, how, how was it? It, a little weird being back in new gra- uh, on an old ground, I guess. I have spent so much time in that press box as a student that it almost felt like I missed nothing. Like it was like I was just right back <laughs> to where I was. And I, you know, I, I, I've obviously kept up with the team the last few years from a distance, and so it's like I know what's going on, and so it, it didn't feel too weird. Now it was hot as hell in that press box because the sun just comes beaming through eleven o'clock the glass. Yeah, yeah I feel also, bad for you in the. Air yeah. conditioning of the press box. <laughs> <laughs> also, I will say, and I, I had a lot of people in, in my DMs again saying, you know, I'm a bitch for complaining about this, but the food situation is piss poor from the university. It always You've has been. You've been in the NFL for three years. You've it, it, it's, I've, I remember the Big 12. It's the worst in the Big 12. It but always it's has gotten been, yeah. It's gotten way worse from when I was in what school. What did they have up there? It was You got a chicken biscuit from Chick-fil-A, and that was it. Nothing else. Which, I mean, look, I'm very appreciative of the chicken biscuit, but I was very surprised there was no pretzels or popcorn or something at halftime. Just, I don't know. just wait till it's chicken. Just want a little popcorn. Look, just wait. I'm going to get I'm gonna get crucified for this in the comments. On well, you know who else got crucified? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I want to tell you a little story about a man. He had a beard, and he was a carpenter. 
Uh, <laughs> here's just prepare yourself for this. When they start, uh, when they replace the chicken biscuits with afternoon, with the afternoon and evening games with the Chick Fil A sandwich. Just get prepared for what Bob Prisbilla is going to be doing next to you. Yeah, he'll hoard all of them. No, oh, well, he bag. does. No, he wipes off the pickle juice. He takes the bun off. Oh, why? He doesn't want the pickle touching. Well, I don't, I don't blame him for that. Like, and he's a kindred spirit of his to this. Like, I can't Pickles imagine disgusting. not eating a pickle on a Chick-fil-A sandwich. That's what I like the little zing. I get, I get the no picks. Bob's an interesting oh, character to sit next to during the games, too. Go ahead, Josh. Sorry. Uh, you you got to have the pickles. Now, I will say I'm like that with tomatoes. I don't want tomato anything on my You on don't my like it when, like, stuff. the little seedy juice is there, nope. like, after you nope. peel it off? Oh, oh that'll ruin everything. <laughs> Bob's great to sit next to, though. I mean, he's 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 quiet, which I appreciate. Right. I don't like talking to anybody during the game. I don't either, yeah. Um, but he also, I, I noticed he doesn't uh, tweet from his laptop. He just tweets from his phone. And maybe that was because it was so hot out and the sun was beaming right on our laptops today. So you couldn't see real the screen hot. real well. Yeah, and you couldn't see the screen. But I was like, oh, that's an interesting move. I, I just learned something about Bob I did not know. That is a little interesting fact. Did you? Was the there a little bit of competition the there to try and get your tweets out first between <laughs> you and Bob? I don't know, but I think I uh, won that today on the whole beat. Usually it's Eric Bailey that you got to beat. And, I will uh, say what I like about your what I like about your tweets is that you don't settle for the just you know the descriptive of the play like you add a little twist to it and I, and I, I appreciate that yeah I do that and I try to I put my opinion in there every once in a while mm-hmm. if somebody makes a great play I say it if somebody screws something up I'll say it you know you don't want to be boring again go follow I, at I George Stoya gained about Twitter. two or three hundred followers X. today nice oh, so we're going I like it. are you at we're 16 going. yet him. almost we're at 15.9 mm, nice people we're Keep at this going. at this pace we're gonna hit 20k easy by the end of the season uh, but i also have people like well, really not, mad at me yeah, about the, the tailgating the, the, the <laughs> calling out the fans was not the <laughs> smartest move to gain <laughs> followers today Oh, no, trust me. There was a point when Josh made me give up the Sooner Scoop. But, like, the Sooner Scoop account used to be my only account on social media. And Josh kind of had to pull me aside one day and be like, Carrie, you tweet a little too much stuff to be our official account. Maybe you should get your own. And I was like, yeah, you're mm-hmm. probably right. Let, let it be your opinion rather than that of <laughs> Soonerscoop.com. I'm telling you, that account blew up during the West Virginia game. Uh, the, uh, uh, what's his name? The uh, Tavon, Austin. Tavon Austin game, yeah. Oh, God. That's when Twitter was at its height, when people were finally figuring out, like, oh, this is awesome for, you know, a companion piece to watch on television. And it just got weirder and weirder that night, and they finally won it. And that's when I knew that Twitter was going to be a huge thing. And now it kind of is, as long as Elon doesn't ruin it. It prefers to be called X. It identifies as X now. Thank you. It's ruined. Um, All right. (laughs) So, Josh, any final thoughts uh, before we get out of here? I appreciate you uh, joining us on this Eskridge Lexus postgame podcast. Uh, don't forget Eskridge Lexus. Uh, go check them out. Uh, Eddie and I, both proud uh, owners of uh, Lexus vehicles, the official travel partner of the uh, the of Sooner Scoop, basically, for everything that we do. Uh, we even broke their windshield on our last trip, and they're like, yeah, no big deal. We didn't break it. Well, somebody in front did. of us. Yeah, the rock did. The um, I, I don't have a ton to add. I will say a guy that I just wanted to note that I thought had a few nice moments, and including one big play, was Grayson Halton. I continue yeah. to really like what I see from him. I, to be honest, like all of those young defensive linemen, like the Grayson Halton, Kelvin thought, Gilliam, Kevin Kelvin Gilliam made a couple of nice plays. Uh, Ashton Sanders got in there for a little bit at the end. Marcus, Marcus Strong, Strong there for a right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mar- I th- I think like of all of the really young guys, Marcus Strong looks the best out of the guys that we saw at practice. Yeah, I remember seeing him at practice the first time. I was like, "Who is that guy?" And I was like, "Oh, Marcus Strong." Okay, so yeah, he looks the part too. Josh, any little tidbits about uh, visits tonight at all? Uh, no, uh, 
it, it was interesting last night as I was driving home from Austin, and you know we'll we'll get into that later. But uh, as I was coming back from my game, I was messaging with Danny Okoye as he's basically driving down I-44. Uh, Miguel Chavis was at his game last night prior to you know Danny coming in for his official. Uh, Danny hurt his shoulder. And I thought, well, okay, is he going to cancel it? So he's like, no, he's going to fix me up. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I don't know what that means exactly, but <laughs> I, I think it um, it's a I, I guess it's a good sign that he's down there working with the trainers and kind of being around those guys and letting them have a look at it. So um, but no, I my er, the only real impression I picked up is I think things are going about like we expected with Daniel Akin Kunmi. I it sounds like that's in a really good place. Now, I do think his plan is probably to take some more official visits, but I I still really like where OU's at, and I think they're kind of cementing their their position at the top of his list right now. And of course, things did not go OU's way with uh, Dominic McKinley right before the weekend. Yeah, I, I forgot to put that message up, and everybody's like, "You didn't say anything." I'm like, "Guys, if he had committed to OU, there'd be a few posts up on the board about it. Like we, we'd be discussing it." So I, I I apologize that we didn't have something saying, "Hey, he went to A and M," but. You know, sometimes, like I said, I was literally traveling to a game when that went down last night. And, um, you know, you, you gotta, gotta have a little bit of ability to read the room. Like something would have happened if a five star picked OU yesterday. Lots of content, uh, on the website we right now, soonerscoop.com. We weren't just sitting on it. <laughs> I mean, are these people uh, idiots? Are they morons? <laughs> I, I mean, I get like, it's a fine line because I get it. Like it's something we covered. We do need to address it. I just kind of assumed someone would say, uh, you know, Oh shit, Dominic McKinley to A&M. It just didn't happen. And it usually does. And that, you know, that covers the base for the people that come to the board to find that stuff out, you know, just to, Hey, how'd it go? You know, that kind of thing. And so I, I get it. But at the same time, I mean, to be like frustrated about that, <laughs> come on, like, you know, it, you could have found that pretty easily. And again, context we're an OU site if a five-star defensive lineman had just committed to uh to OU we'd have four stories up like like we do every time so I just I don't understand that oh no sorry tech tech is this is this do we is not have it on TV being a real what? bad it's on like Paramount 12. or some I'm shit. on Par Paramount is it on Paramount plus uh I am it looks like just CBS Sports. Hang on, let me back out of it. Mine just says CBS it, on the app. Yeah, yeah. It says it's K. It, mine is KHOU, so that that's the local CBS. So it might just be on your general general CBS station. God, why was that on CBS tonight? It's weird. You know, well, it was a it was a weather delay, so it was supposed to be over by now. Yeah, like long over. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't think CBS did games this early. Were there were there any other upsets that I, did I see North Northern Illinois beat Boston College maybe? Which I don't think that's an upset. I think yeah. they went into overtime. I don't know if who won that game. Boston College, was bad. two bad football teams. Did uh, UTSA a, beat Houston? Uh, no, Houston beat UTSA. Did they? Okay, that's a good win for Houston. Yeah, I, I think I guess. Uh, UTSA. I think was like a half point favor. They were one two point, point favor. favorites yeah. this week earlier. Oh. That was in the Survivor Series. I, I picked nothing but about one point or two point games for that. I want all the eliminations. So, yeah, but not a good day for the Big Twelve uh, outside of you know, OU. I mean, just K State overall, played well. Did they? Who yeah. did they play today? Some nobody. But uh, they, Southeast Missouri. State they beat the hell out of Yeah, Southeast it. Missouri State. They beat hey, the hell Bobby Petrino's old school. I, I, huh? Was that Bobby uh, Petrino's old school? Petrino's at uh, Missouri State. Okay. Yeah, I I am um, guys. I don't know how much you got to see the Texas game. Texas looked very mediocre for a large chunk of that game. They kind of pulled away late, but even still, I mean, you know, it was seven rise. three in the I, first quarter, fourteen yeah. three or seventeen three at halftime, whatever. Yours was nineteen of thirty two sixty three touchdowns, no interceptions. Uh, and for all the talk of that offensive line, they didn't overwhelm Rice. I mean, like they they were better. But, like, I, again, I, I keep coming back to this thought that, like, Kelvin Banks is really, really special, and everybody's letting that confuse himself. Oh, Texas offensive line's different. I don't know. Like, I think Kelvin Banks is different. I don't know if the other four guys at this point, and DJ Campbell's tremendously talented. Like, they, they'll get better, I think. But I, I think people keep saying, oh, well, Kyle Flood came from Alabama. 
Yeah, and he was in charge of, like, the last few years of Alabama that was some of their worst offensive line play in the Nick Saban era. Like, I, I think you guys are confusing things a little bit. They also just don't have B. John Robinson, and that's going to just hurt them at times. Like, they just don't have a guy that's as good as him. And, I mean, that's – he was great, so it's hard to replace yeah, I mean, him. Well, but Sarkeesian yeah. was still – I mean, he was still criticized for not using him enough. Yeah. So uh-huh. Tech missed a field goal. Xavier Worthy had yeah. a good day, though. There, it's it's there. going to the fourth quarter tied at 17. Yeah, we got it on now, so. Okay. All right. Uh, there's a lot of coverage at Sooner Scoop for you guys. Uh, make sure you go check it out. George and Bob uh, already have a lot of stuff up. Uh, the YouTube channel, uh, Eddie and uh, George did shoot a video after the game uh, at the stadium uh, with their breakdown, so you can go check that out. And we'll keep continuing uh, to put those YouTube videos up this week. It was a lot of fun last week. You guys are doing a great job of supporting it. Uh, go and subscribe, youtube.com slash Sooner Scoop. Uh, also, want to remind you, Dead Soxy, the score sell. Uh, oh, you crushed it, so you get 40% off. <laughs> they're not giving 73% off? They're not off. giving 73%. They can't lose money. Uh, but 40%, they're, they're fine with breaking even. So 40% off. Uh, use that promo code SCOOP like you do for everything else. You get 40% off your entire order. So uh, Also, I was told today, boys, they're sending us a boatload of no-shows. So we're all going to be swimming in no-shows. I'm wearing mine right now. Very nice. They don't look good because I, I can't see them. I was the best dressed in the press box today. Can't, can't lie. Can you uh, watch comments? Well, no, Tram had a purple jacket on. Well, Barry's in a league of his own. He doesn't count. I did get some people asking, hey, where'd you get that watch? I said, I don't know. Ta- contact my boss, Kerry Murdoch. <laughs> you know where you got it. Uh, all right. Uh, that's going to do it for us. We appreciate everybody listening. Thanks to uh, another great year of post-game podcast to uh, Eskridge Lexus and Ed Eskridge and all the boys over there. Uh, I got to go get my oil, oil changed, I think, this week. So I'll be seeing you guys soon. Uh, but thank you for listening. We'll be back again next week after the SMU game for another edition of the Eskridge Lexus postgame podcast right here on Soonerscoop.com.